All right, guys, welcome to our third lecture on combat sports. Um, if you look at the syllabus, this was originally supposed to be 1930 through 1960 or 1950. I moved it to 1960 just because it, it fit a little bit better how I wanted to go about covering things. Um, keep in mind, when we left off last time, we had just um, gone through 1900 through um, up till 1930. And uh, we had talked about um, a lot of interesting fighters. We had talked about particularly Jack Johnson and um, how he was uh, so hated by white America um, and um, kind of his uh, braggadocious type style of how he did things. Um, and the reason I bring that up is I wanted to, to frame it in the context of this lecture and I want you to, to kind of understand that. So. You have to understand this era that we're about to talk, this this 30 year era or so, um, is, is really full of historical events. Um, the first being in 1929 when the stock market crashed, uh, uh, ushering in the Great Depression, uh, a 10 year period where uh, we had over 20% unemployment, sometimes as high as 30, 33%, and our gross domestic product of our um, our economic system was only around 1%. Uh, so you have to kind of put that in the context of, of what's going on um, with sport. And so the first fighter we're going to talk about is James J. Braddock, the Cinderella Man. So obviously, guys, if you've seen this movie um, uh, starring Russell Crowe, he does a great job in the movie of portraying what it was like to... Um, to train during that era, he really did a great job. He was the Depression era champ. So he was a heavyweight champ from 1935 to 1937. Um, had a, uh, a very, very uh, a good fight with Joe Lewis um, and, and was a popular, popular person, popular fighter during that really tough time um, in the history of, uh, of our country. Um, you know, coming out of the Great Depression, um, we really enter into a six-year period of World War II. And you have to understand, guys, that, that almost all sports were interrupted. And it interrupted the careers um, of many professional athletes. And we lost a lot of college and professional athletes died during the war. So I want you to put that in the context of, of what we're going to talk about. And so... The primary fighter that we're going to talk about during this lecture is Joe Lewis. Now, I, I will argue with anybody, I think Joe Lewis was the greatest heavyweight champ of all time. He was the longest reigning heavyweight champ of all time. He defended his title 25 times, and he missed the prime of his career because he, he served in the war. Um, unlike... Uh, Jack Johnson, he was very, very popular in white America. Um, the reason was twofold. One, um, as I had mentioned last week, Jack Johnson, he set back African Americans' ability to fight for championships about two decades um, because people didn't like the way he did things. Joe Lewis was very much different. He was very much, uh, much more polished, not braggadocious. He was still a womanizer. He still had his issues. But he was very much a yes, sir, yes, ma'am, um, very good interview, very modest, uh, fought in the war. Um, and so that helped him. But really what what made him popular was that you have to understand, guys, that for this six year period, we were, you know, a lot of it, we were engulfed in war. And Joe Lewis, his main fights were against foreign fighters and his greatest fights were against Max Schmeling who was a German and a Nazi. Uh, and you have to understand that Joe Lewis kind of, this kind of parallels Jesse Owens at the same time. You know, great Olympic sprinter, great athlete, period. Owens went to Berlin to the 1936 Olympics and, you know, and, and blistered everybody in the Olympic Games. And so uh, even though this was a time of, of ex, uh, extreme racism and, and Lewis and Owens both faced it, they were very much liked uh, it, by a lot of white Americans. And it was because at this point we were united against one thing and that was defeating um, the Nazis and the Japanese. Um, he had actually lost to Schmeling in their first fight. He was out of shape. He had not trained very well, took him for granted. 
in the 1937 title fight, he ended the, the match in the first round. Um, he landed one punch to the ribs of Schmeling and broke his ribs and ended the fight. Um, as Joe Lewis aged, he, he struggled later in life with money. He got in trouble for the law. He didn't pay his taxes, and he, his, he was in poor health. And he ended up making, uh, to, in order to make money, he had to take some fights, which he, he lost, that he just needed to fight. And he, he made, his, made money as a greeter in Las Vegas casinos when they had fight, um, had fight nights because he was a popular fighter. And he died in 1981. He was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Um, and a couple of years ago, I took my family up to, to D.C. to visit him. When we went to, um, to Arlington, I, I made it a point to try to see if I could find his grave site because, like I said, not only is he, was he my favorite fighter, I, I have a hard time not thinking he's the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. And this on the right is his gravestone in Arlington. Um, following Lewis, um, Rocky Marciano came in as a champ, but he was the champ from 1952 to 1955, and he retired as the only undefeated champ. And he was very, very significant because he was the first fighter to be watched on live TV. Keep in mind, prior to that, fights were recorded and shown in movie theaters. So people got to see Marciano fight on live television. Um, it was very much similar to what something like you would see now in um, like a Thursday night or a Sunday night football, Monday night football. There were prize fights on one night a week. He was also very popular because he was a white Italian. Um, he had some real significant fights, one versus Walcott and another one versus Joe Lewis. And, and I, I mentioned that earlier that Lewis later in his career needed fights to make money. Um, so Lewis and Marciano fight and Marciano crushed him. He, Marciano did not want to fight Lewis. Lewis was his hero and he did not want to fight him. And, and Lewis, you know, pushed it, pushed it because he needed the money uh, and like I said, the, the fight was very lopsided. Um, some other fighters, and like I said, primarily we'll cover heavyweight champions, but there were some other fighters at the different weights in this era that we need to cover. Henry Armstrong won world titles at featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight. Uh, he, he held multiple titles between 1937 and 1940. He won all the titles within 10 months, and he held four individual titles at one time over four months, which is absolutely crazy to think about. Another fighter was Sugar Ray Robinson. He was born Walker Smith. He took the name Sugar Ray Robinson um, during his amateur time, and he's considered by most people to be the best middleweight and welterweight of all time. He had a 25-year career, fought 202 times uh, with only 19 losses. And very much in, in the in the grain of a lot of these heavy or a lot of fighters that we're going to talk about, combat sport athletes in general, he was known across the globe for his lifestyle. He drove multiple pink Cadillacs. He had somebody that was in charge of just shining his shoes. So he was um, uh, he flaunted his lifestyle, and it, and like I said, for a lot of people, they make as much money in combat sports outside of the ring as they do inside of the ring. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I look forward to looking at your first assignments, um, and uh, you guys have a great week.